Dubai and Doha may seem alike at first glance, but there are notable differences between these two thriving Middle Eastern cities. And it's because of these reasons that some are moving from one city to the other. So let's take a look at both these cities and see why people are really choosing Qatar over Dubai. City of Endless Opportunities Both these cities offer many opportunities. They blend ancient traditions with modern comforts, making them magnets for nomads seeking to expand their horizons and take their careers to the next level. But why are some people opting for Qatar over Dubai? Dubai is a city of the future. It has a glistening lifestyle defined by fancy hotels, high-end shopping, and a vibrant nightlife. In contrast, Doha delivers a more relaxed, traditional vibe with a firm focus on Qatari culture and heritage. This shows in their taxes and finances. Neither Doha nor Dubai has an income tax. That's right, your paycheck stays intact in both places, which is a big plus for your bank accounts. But there are a few financial subtleties to consider. Doha offers a slightly lighter hit to your wallet, with generally lower living costs. There is no sales or value-added tax, except for a tiny tax on luxury items. Plus, the minimum wage is 1,000 QR a month, with extra cash for food and housing. That's 275 US dollars. Dubai, on the other hand, is known for its fancy lifestyle, which can nudge your expenses up quite a notch. They've also got a 5% VAT on goods and services, though that is still quite low by global standards. Now, when it comes to salaries, Doha serves up slightly fatter paychecks in some sectors. In Qatar, the game's strong in the hydrocarbon industry, which swells to over 50% of the GDP. But for digital nomads, Qatar is a welcoming and supportive environment for remote work. They foster innovation and attract international talents through initiatives like the Qatar Free Zones Authority and the Qatar Science and Technology Park. The Sites of Qatar Qatar is a place where you can easily reach desert dunes and crystal clear waters, where modern cities like Doha coexist with ancient villages and cultural wonders. Qatar stands out on the Arabian Peninsula, its compact size extending north into the Parisian Gulf in Western Asia. To the south, it shares a border with Saudi Arabia, while the rest is surrounded by tranquil waters. Qatar boasts a desert climate with year-round sunshine, comfortable summers, and pleasantly cool winters. Fun fact, Qatar, with its absence of rivers and a meager annual rainfall of about 10 centimeters, relies on advanced desalination plants to transform seawater into drinking water, ensuring a steady supply for its residents. Qatar covers just 11,437 square kilometers. It shares an 87-kilometer land border with Saudi Arabia in the Middle East, with only a narrow gulf separating it from Bahrain. It has majestic desert dunes shaped by the shifting sands of time. These crescent-shaped dunes, kissed by the El Shamel winds, are surrounded by ancient hills and mountains, casting a canvas of black and brown hues. The tallest peak, Quran Abu Albal, in southern Qatar, rises just 103 meters above sea level, contrasting with Qatar's lowest point at sea level. Beyond the desert, Qatar unveils a coastline stretching 563 kilometers. Here you'll find beaches with powdery white sands and calm seas that shift from turquoise to deep blue. Along the coastline, 10 islands offer pockets of paradise, some adorned with stunning sights and resorts. Qatar's Beaches Take Sea Lion Beach, for example. It's located in Meziaid and is Qatar's go-to coastal retreat. It's not just for swimming. This beach is a playground for families and pals. It has camel rides, safari adventures, and thrilling dune bashing. And as the sun dips below the horizon, Sea Line Beach transforms into a magical spot for sunset lovers. Getting here is a breeze, a mere 35-minute drive from Doha International Airport or 40 minutes from downtown Doha and you're in paradise. Then we have Khor El Adaid, which is just a half-hour drive through the enchanting Mesaid sand dunes from Sea Line Beach. Here you'll uncover Qatar's hidden gem, the Inland Sea. Recognized by UNESCO, it's a natural wonderland. Fish to your heart's content, set up camp under the stars, or witness the sun's graceful descent into the water. 
Accessing this oasis requires a skilled driver to navigate the dunes. It's a 30-minute ride from Sea Line Beach, or a roughly two-and-a-half-hour drive from Doha. Now let's take a look at Al Maruna Beach. Here, you'll have picture-perfect golden sands and inviting turquoise waters. This is a beach lover's haven in northeastern Qatar, just before Fuwairat Beach. This slice of paradise boasts shallow, crystal-clear waters and powdery soft sand, making it ideal for a day of seaside bliss. Getting from Doha to El Maruna takes roughly 1 hour and 10 minutes via El Shamel Road. Activities In Doha, you'll find arts, culture, and intellectual thrills. The Museum of Islamic Art, the Qatar Philharmonic Orchestra, art galleries, and cultural fiestas rule here. If you crave conversations deeper than small talk, Doha has got your back. Doha has a bunch of outdoor activities for water lovers as well. It's a paradise with scuba diving, jet skiing, and doe trips. Landlubbers can go wild with quad biking or opt for a tranquil camel ride. When in Doha, don't miss the Museum of Islamic Art. It's a haven for history buffs. Another gem is Villaggio Mall, an Italian-themed shopping wonderland complete with a canal and gondolas. Doha isn't the only cool city in Qatar, though. Qatar has many small cities and towns. Some are port towns, while others are heavy contributors to the oil and gas industry. You will find abandoned villages, archaeological sites, inlets, natural mangroves, and a lot more here. One such city is El Khor. El Khor is in the north of Qatar and serves as the capital of the El Khor and El Takira municipality. Established in 1972, it boasts a rich history rooted in pearl trading, once a cornerstone of Qatar's economy. From its modest origins, as a remote fishing and pearl diving settlement, El Khor has burgeoned into a significant urban center, spanning approximately 16,000 square meters. It now ranks among Qatar's primary cities, second only to Doha. While the city's association with the oil and gas industry is prominent due to its proximity to Raslafan Industrial City and North Oil, El Khor offers a diverse range of attractions beyond its industrial ties. Nature enthusiasts will find wonders in this region, including the ancient Ain Tlitan Wall, Al Khor Towers, Takira Mangroves, Purple Island, and the serene El Farkia Beach. Moreover, El Khor proudly houses the El Khor Park and Zoo, as well as the magnificent El Bait Stadium, the very stadium where the 2022 FIFA World Cup took place. To the west is the city of Dukan. Dukan emerged into prominence with the discovery of oil. Today, it stands as an industrial hub primarily inhabited by Qatar Petroleum employees. The city remains restricted to outsiders, with photography strictly prohibited within its confines. However, the surrounding region teems with attractions, drawing visitors keen on exploration. Dukan's allure lies in proximity to a wealth of captivating sites and points of interest. Marinat al Shamel, situated at Qatar's northern tip, traces its origins to the 1970s. Although it ranks among the nation's least populated areas today, it boasts a unique charm. Encircled by run-down fishing villages and an array of inviting beaches, it offers a serene escape. Throughout the year, tourists flock to Madinat al Shamel to relish in its offerings. Eastward lies El Ruaiz, a quaint coastal town covered in remarkable landmarks. Arsan Cafe, housed within a converted police station, is a must-visit spot. Here, you can savor some of the region's finest coffee while gazing out at the expanse of the Arabian Gulf. Yes, it's Al Ruayi's beach that seals the limelight, particularly during sunrise and sunset. Expenses Whether you're in Doha or Dubai, your biggest expense will be your abode. While Doha typically offers more budget-friendly rents compared to Dubai's luxury price tags, the latter gives you a broader range of choices. Dubai has a heftier price tag than Doha when it comes to the cost of living. This is due to exorbitant rent and school fees in Dubai, which can take up a significant chunk of your earnings. On the plus side, salaries in Dubai are generally higher to counterbalance these expenditures. While Qatar may not be your budget-friendly paradise, it's a tad gentler on the wallet compared to its Gulf neighbors. According to the 2023 Mercer Cost of Living Index, Doha sits at a modest 126th place out of 227 cities. 
That's more pocket-friendly than Dubai, Riyadh, or Kuwait City. For reference, Dubai sits at number 18, while Rome is number 59. So, in Qatar, your wallet catches a break. The cost of living is much lower compared to Dubai. The main reason? Doha isn't quite the tourist magnet Dubai is, so there's less demand for the high-end stuff. If you're rolling with a family of four in Doha, brace yourself for a monthly bill of around $3,100, and that's without the rent. Flying solo? Expect it to drop to around $880, but even then, it's still cheaper than Dubai. Meanwhile, Dubai often shines on the global stage as one of the pricier places to live in. It might not be pocket-friendly like your small-town hideaway, but it's a far cry from the wallet-squeezing grip of New York, London, or even Paris. Rents will make you wince, and dining out can be a hit on your savings. Dubai may have higher salaries, but it's not enough to make up for the expenses. And what about buying your own house? In Doha, you'll find everything from soaring skyscrapers in West Bay to cozy villas in the Pearl Qatar. But keep this in mind, quality often comes with a hefty price tag. Expats in Qatar can buy both freehold and leasehold properties, invest in real estates, and you might score a residency visa. If you're eyeing a long stay in Qatar, the reasonable property prices might be your golden ticket. Mortgages have become more accessible, but remember, expats can only borrow up to 70% of the property's value. As far as safety goes, you can rest easy in both Doha and Dubai. But Qatar often clinches a slightly higher rank in global safety assessments, making it a top choice for families. It's renowned for its family-friendly atmosphere, offering an exceptional quality of life. Let us know in the comments what's your favorite thing about Qatar. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more.